Thank you very much. Thank you, Jez. Thanks, everybody. It's great to be here. I hope you're all having a lovely time. I certainly am waiting out the back to be on at the last uh, of the show. Um, it's been fun. It's been good. I um, I'll tell you something that happened to me uh, during lockdown. Now, I've never witnessed this before, but I was at my local Coles, as most of us were through lockdown, because we could go there. I spent sort of six, seven hours a day at my local Coles, and I witnessed... <laughs> I witnessed someone shoplift for the first time ever. Never seen that before in my life. I witnessed, I estimate he was about 14 years old, this boy, he shoplifted. He wasn't shoplifting like standard things like chockey bars or cans of Coke like I was. Right? I witnessed a 14 year old boy put a meat tray down his pants. <laughs> Pretty brazen, isn't it? Just a full barbecue pack, a few sausage, a few chops, a few little steakettes, just all down the front of his pants. I saw him do it and I thought, that's hilarious. There's no one else here. It's late at night. I'll have a bit of fun here. And I just went, hey, mate, you don't need to put your shopping down your pants. There's red baskets out the front, right? <laughs> bit of fun. And he swings around really aggressive and goes, ah, oh, fuck off. <laughs> 14 years old, tell him to, very aggressive, tell him to fuck off. Would have been 50 kilos tops this kid. Well, 52 with the meat tray, right? But nothing of him, right? It's just <laughs> this tiny little kid telling me to fuck off. Before he told me to fuck off, I couldn't care less about the shoplifting. I couldn't care less. I wasn't going to ruin my Tuesday night. Seeing that I was getting a couple of cornettos. I wanted to go home. After he told me to fuck off, I thought, I want to kill this kid. I want this kid dead. I want him dead tonight. I want him dead now, right? That's it. I'm going to jam a cornetto right down his throat. I want him dead now. I said, I'm going to get security, mate. And he goes, don't get security. If you do, I'll knock you out. I said, you're not ever knocking a hole in the plastic on the meat tray, champ. You're not <laughs> knocking me out at all. So I, I go to take off to get security. And before I've even turned, security are on me. The main security guard and the boss, they've obviously seen him on CCTV. They've come and they get around him, right? And the big security boss is like, Jared knows his name. It's not his first rodeo, Jared. Right, Jared, put the meat tray back. And he goes, what meat tray? He clearly has a massive protruding <laughs> meat tray. <laughs> Looks like a boogie board down his pants, right? <laughs> what meat tray? And he's like, the one down your pants, mate. Just put it back and we won't call the cops. As soon as the cops are mentioned, down go the shoulders on Jared. He slunks right in. He just pulls the meat tray out. The meat's kind of scooched up one end. He <laughs> levels it out like a gentleman and then pops it back into the fridge. <laughs> then just skulks out of the store, right? And they didn't press any charges or anything. He just, they just let him go. And I just stood there, big round of applause. I thought that was fucking great. Great to witness. Thanks for everybody involved. <laughs> Took two things away from that experience, guys. Two things. One is I'm worried about our future with the kids. You know, I don't have much to do with 14-year-old kids these days. Not that I ever did, but I don't now either. <laughs> but I'm worried about our future. Are they all little meat steel and cockheads? Like, that's frustrating for our future. That's worrying. Um, second thing I took away from that experience was a half-price meat tray, which is quite nice. <laughs> um, quite nice yeah. <laughs> Again. I uh, got told some disturbing news by my, my little nephew during lockdown. I'm sorry to break this to you on a lovely Sunday night here. But uh, my nephew, told, he's town, he goes to school in Canberra. He told me the great schoolyard game of stacks on has been barred because of COVID. We can't play stacks on in school level anymore. If you don't remember stacks on, it was also known as pile up or stacks on the mill. Great schoolyard game where you'd spot someone in the school level. Remember that? And you'd say, right, stacks on that person. <laughs> remember that? And 10 to 15 people of different ages and sizes run to that person, <laughs> drag them to the ground against their will and then just stack up on top of them, basically. It's, it's in the name, Stacks On. It's been barred. It's quite disappointed when I heard it's been barred because I think Stacks On teaches kids valuable lessons in life. doesn't like what suffocation feels like, uh, <laughs> what a broken arm feels like, <laughs> who your friends aren't. Uh, for example, like Stacks On, it made me the man I am today. I can safely say that. So, um, very anxious man. Always, uh, <laughs> always on my toes. <laughs> don't sleep that well, but... Um, it's all right for my nephew, though, because we're a Stacks On family. We do Stacks On at family events. <laughs> so if we have a barbecue or something, my dad will call Stacks On a certain family member. We all get involved. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Nan hates it, obviously. She doesn't like it. Right? Uh, it's always Stacks On Nan, to be honest. She struggles to get away. <laughs> mm. I also about the frigid test at his school in Canberra. Can't do the frigid test anymore. Sorry to break that to you as well. Um, you people remember that. If you don't remember the frigid test, guys, that was where you got two fingers like that. That's alarm bells or isn't What's going on here? <laughs> remember the frigid test? And you ran them up the inside thigh of another person. And the higher you got on the thigh, the less frigid that person was. Remember that? <laughs> Any couples meet like that back in the day? Yeah. That's barred now. Can't do that anymore. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Wasn't as surprised got that one got barred, to be honest. But... Got to wonder how that got through the board of directors in the first place, don't you, the old and Cut it out, guys. I'm watching. <laughs>
Nan hates that too, but she point that out. Uh, she's, uh, <laughs> she's pretty free. No, she's all right. She's, uh, she, had, she had six kids. She's fine. Um, <laughs> leave you with this, guys. Absolutely lovely. Leave you with this. I, um, I want to tell you about the best answer I've ever seen anyone give. I saw this outside a pub uh, not too long ago. It was about one in the morning. I finished the show. I'm walking past the pub. I witness a man give the best answer I've ever seen anyone give in any situation, right? One in the morning. This guy's kind of half standing, half leaning up against the wall of this pub. He clearly had a massive knot. Got stains down the front of his shirt. Just sort of rocking, right? Pretty quickly, four police officers surround him all in their high-vis gear. And one of the officers tries to chat to him, but he's just too off his face. He slides down the wall onto his bum. Right? When he's on his bum, the officer that was trying to chat to him puts some blue rubber gloves on. Right? I thought, oh, I'll stick around for this. Right? Where's this guy? <laughs> hey, where's this off to? He leans, a, he leans over to the guy like this, right? puts one blue glove on either cheek, face, cheek, right? Puts it like that, holds his face and he goes, Craig, come on, Craig. What have you taken tonight? What have you taken? And Craig gave the best answer I've ever heard. He just goes, ah, I just, I just been taking it easy. <laughs> Good on you guys. My name's Daniel Carlo. Enjoy the rest of your festival. Take it easy.